23 minutes after the hour, Michael Patrick Shields heard all across the state of Michigan this morning in Massachusetts. You know by now the news that a 15-year-old girl has uh, hanged herself after she was mercilessly harassed for months with taunts and threats that school administrators knew about but didn't do anything to stop. Nine students were charged in the bullying of Phoebe Prince, uh, who hanged herself at her family's home in January. And uh, yesterday, a story out of Ionia, that a student recovering after being injured in a deadly game, Lucas Buxton, hurt when one of his teenage classmates walked up behind him and choked him. Buxton says the technique is uh, commonly used when playing a game called the choking game or the sleeper hold. And uh, the f- student lost consciousness, fell to the floor, then required eight stitches to his chin and suffered some other facial injuries. The doctor involved said that had he been deprived of oxygen for a few moments longer, he could have died. The choking game, is that some sort of bullying? Well, let's talk about that this morning because it's making not only statewide news but national news. And Kevin Epling, who we've spoken to in the past on the phone, is in studio with us here. He's the co-director of Bully Police USA. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Michael. Thank you. I I, I don't like to ask you this question, but could you tell us your story? Sure. Uh, Our son, uh, Matthew, uh, took his life in 2002, and this was following a uh, end of school year hazing. Uh, His last day of eighth grade, he was assaulted by upperclassmen as they welcomed to high school, Hmm. and um, it was really an assault and battery is what it was. Um, But this What did they do? They actually uh, kind of lured him out of our house. He was at home around the corner, and they were lying in wait, and uh, three of them attacked him and a friend, and they smashed eggs on him and poured syrup on him mm-hmm. and basically said, you know, your, your high school is going to be hell. Um, and that's devastating for mm-hmm. the mind of a 14-year-old. Yeah, it's a scary transition to go from uh, from middle school or grade school into high school. And I, and I think it has to do with the personality. Matt was also someone who kind of really fostered, you know, himself as as a leader within his class, a friend to everybody. He, you know, everybody knew him. He was popular. To have that taken away mm-hmm. it was very, very frightening, I think, to him. And even though we talked with him at length and he wanted to press charges, um, the night before we were to go and talk with police, Matt ended his life, which sent our rest of our lives in a totally different direction um when that when the incident happened did he come straight home and talk about it yes actually he called me like one minute after it happened i I was on my way home Mm -hmm. on that day and uh he he called me on my cell phone and uh, i i missed it by five minutes because it only happened like maybe 150 yards from our home Mm -hmm. so no he called us immediately Uh, i called the police immediately immediately they came they did the police report the assault and battery report but after that, it kind of sat on a desk, um, and then there was really nothing done till that uh, at least four to five weeks later. Five weeks? Yeah. And, and uh, did you have any sense during that five weeks that it was bothering him more than it would uh, any other incident? Not, not really. Um, I was actually out of the country for mm-hmm. two weeks on, on work, but my wife was there. There wasn't a really big change, you know, in Matt. He got a job at Meyer. He actually worked at Meyer the, the day of his death. Um, he had made plans for vacation. You know, he had researched a BMX bike. He was an avid BMX and skateboarder that he had just recently purchased. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there were no outward signs. But there wasn't a lot of investigation in his death investigation to what happened in that transitionary period, mm-hmm. which is one of the things that I think by talking about this issue for the last couple of years, we've seen an increase in police involvement in bullying cases Uh, or in teen suicides. They want to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've done enough of that over the years, especially in teen suicides, to look at what are all those factors that may have led into that. And as we do, and we talk to more people, because I have more people come up to me at conferences, that they've had several deaths at schools, and they they have a feeling that bullying has been related. Did uh, did Matt leave a note? No. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. And uh, he and I I were home. Uh, he, He was away from me for 15 minutes. And it, it must seem like it was yesterday. It, it does for me because when I go out and I talk about this, I, I basically I relive this mm-hmm. um, every time. But I think it's important enough that um, there has to be a voice out there for other parents, for other students to, to make a difference. And, and that's what this whole uh, endeavor about getting a piece of legislation passed is really making a difference for our ch- children. 
Governor Granholm uh, was uh, just renewing her call the other day for the state lawmakers to pass anti-bullying legislation. What would that legislation do, and uh, is it anywhere near to becoming a reality? The, the legislation currently is, is sitting in the Senate and House Education Committee, so we're waiting for it either to have a hearing, which I think would be great of, of having experts come in and talk about the situation and move it forward. In uh, the, the piece of legislation itself will do three things. One, it will require all the schools to have an anti-bullying, anti-harassment policy, mm -hmm. to have an open meeting about that so parents and law enforcement can actually come in and talk with it within their own community mm -hmm. and turn it into the state. Right now, we really have no way to gauge what policies are out there and who has a policy. The state put forth a model policy in 2001 asking schools to come up with their own policies. 2006, it was revised by the ba on uh, the basis of our piece of legislation. So there is a model policy for schools to use. But I've recently been at schools, and they're just now getting around to making policies. So I think you know, our, some of our schools have kind of had an eight-year uh, gap in what they've been asked to do to finally doing something to help protect our kids and also to, to work with parents better. That's one of the things about the legislation is I've always wanted to be preventative. Mm -hmm. It's not punitive. Why would anybody argue against legislation like that? That's a very good question because uh, every time that uh, we have rewritten the bill for some of those thoughts of legislators, we've come back and we've gotten various different responses, you know, that it's unfunded mandate. Well, we, we worked on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't tell schools what to do. They have to have local control. We've worked on that. Mm -hmm. It's in the policy. We really want them to do something locally. A lot of people have said this is all about sexual orientation language. It's not. It is all about safety. And we need to get away from all the hurdles that are keeping us from helping our children. And let's look at the long-term goals of what this piece of legislation will do. And that will create better communication between law enforcement, parents, students. Because we have to give students the opportunity to speak up. I suppose people could say, well, that incident didn't happen in the school. It happened in the street. Right. And, and you would. And I, I think... But, what has to happen in schools today because also the use of technology math's had nothing to do with technology but schools really need to look at all the factors that go on outside of the school and how they impact a student's life they originate in the school though everything always comes back to the school as well mm -hmm. you know it may start in the school carried out in the playground off school property it comes back into the school all of those do affect a child's ability to to learn in the school if their safety is compromised